In this video, I show you the 10 steps that I followed to fabricate, install, and then finish my ultra thin plywood flooring. Before doing this project, I checked out a lot of other tutorials online. In particular, John Hines' overview of how he made and installed his plywood flooring. There's a link to that down in the description. I went for this ultra thin stuff as opposed to three quarter inch flooring. So uh, on the bottom here, you've got a piece of three quarter inch plywood. And on the top, the stuff I used, I went for the ultra thin uh, flooring for two reasons. One is that I got a good deal on this birch plywood. And in my installation, I needed really thin floors. You'll see in the video, that's because I installed them on an old bus that I have that I've been remodeling. So uh, if anyone else needs thin flooring, thin flooring, this is the tutorial for you. I'll show you the 10 steps I followed to get the job done. Now, cutting the planks is a big part of this job. I have the sheets of plywood first, just to make them more manageable, and then calculated the width I wanted for each plank. Uh, for me, that ended up being just under four inches wide. I've seen other people do wider boards, which uh, also has a good look, but I went with a little bit narrower uh, planks, just for uh, the way my space looks and the way I wanted it to turn out. I did this on my table saw, as you can see. You could use a circular saw with a cutting board. I also used a fine tooth blade on the table saw, which had very little tear out, and I would highly recommend. A uh, note on expenses, the plywood was about 18 bucks a sheet. So my price including glue and nails and finish and whatnot was about two bucks a square foot. Uh, it looks like manufactured flooring is about eight to $10 a square foot. So you definitely save some money this way, but you also work more. With the boards done, it was time to tune up their upper edges or camphor them. This produces a better overall look in the end. I used my router for this, uh, which I built into the table saw cart a few years back. You could do this with a sanding block, I guess. I played with some sample pieces ahead of time to get the camphor just right. And then I just established a routine, camphoring each board and then stacking them all the same side up. The next step involves prepping the subfloor. Now mine was in good shape, I just installed it, but if you need to level or clean your subfloor or remove imperfections like nails, do that. Your subfloor really needs to be flat and even for the flooring to look any good. My installation steps were to apply wood glue to the board and then for the first board, I had to make sure it was perfectly even off the wall. Even just a little bit of unevenness will create a big irregularity over, uh, over your run. So apply glue to the board, even it up, and then nail it down with a few brads. I use three quarter inch brads. I set up my cutting station up as close to the work area as I could and used a fine tooth blade again in this saw here. Note that you want to maintain an irregular pattern to your boards. So use odd length pieces to start your rows and you'll be okay. Don't let seams match up or even come close to matching up a few boards away. And then on the next row, after that first one was laid down, I only did one thing differently and I did this for all the other rows, and that was to apply a bead of glue to the edge. You don't need to gap plywood flooring because it has layers running different ways and doesn't expand or contract. So I did glue my boards to each other to get a really tight fit, 
And fewer nails means filling fewer nail holes later. I got some help at the saw for much of the project. It does go much faster with one person cutting and the other laying down the floor, though you can do both jobs yourself. And I went through about a gallon of glue, so plan ahead. With the floor in, I admired it a bit, and then it was time to fill all those nail holes. I used wood filler and tube, which John Hines recommended, and liked the way it looked. I also had help with this, which made the whole thing go a lot faster. Sanding not only evens out the boards, but removes any wood filler on the faces. With thin plywood though, be careful not to over sand, it's really easy to go through that first layer. The stain I used was incorporated in a water-based polyurethane. It ended up being a little bit lighter than I was hoping for, but then after applying it, I kind of liked it, so it worked out. I'm pretty sure the name was Chestnut. Apply with the grain of the plywood. A lot of people suggest maintaining a wet edge, but I didn't have a problem with lines forming. It just looked good. With that first layer of stain and polyurethane dry from sitting out overnight, I lightly sanded by hand, vacuumed, and started applying layer after layer of a clear water-based poly. The polyurethane I used uh, didn't need to be sanded if it didn't sit for 24 hours, so I did enough cycles that I didn't have to do too much sanding. So those are my floors. Thanks for checking out the project and check out the links in the description if you're gonna do this project yourself. And if you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed.